because we know that it's not a crime to have them born. We don't have any control over that. So just to kind of be aware of the word illegal. And so instead of that, just replace it with undocumented. Um, next, I put together a video. Today, there are two undocumented students who are being told that they cannot attend college because of their legal status. There are 18 states in the country that not only allow undocumented students to attend college, but also give them the right to institute tuition rates. New Mexico is one of these states. Under SB 582, undocumented students are protected against discrimination when applying for college. The bill states that legal status cannot influence the decision of whether or not a student is admitted. It also protects the student's eligibility for education benefits. This gives undocumented students the access to the lottery scholarship, which can cover up to $2,400 of tuition, as long as the student complies with requirements, including the successful completion of 15 new credit hours each semester while maintaining a 2.5 GPA. But what about the rest of the cost? In the first semester, they have to pay out of pocket for the books. Then we got uh, all the bridge and then another scholarship. Then we the same the book part, but it was it was tough the first semester. About sixty five thousand undocumented students graduate from high school each year. Only seven thousand to thirteen thousand of these students are enrolled in college, leaving more than half of these students without a higher education. So why should we invest in their education? You ask. Because we are the future, we want to contribute to the country just like we have been doing in the past. Immigration has a great positive impact on the U.S. We've spent last year $113 billion on illegal immigrants. We have to do something about it, and we have to start by building a wall, a big, beautiful, powerful wall. The building of a wall and mass deportations would affect the U.S. in the United Last year, undocumented immigrants paid $800 billion in taxes. They also contribute $300 billion to the Social Security Fund, which they receive no part of. Finalmente, en Estados Unidos, quienes se dedican a actividades agrícolas que los estadounidenses no quieren realizar son los inmigrantes, especialmente los mexicanos y los centroamericanos. Undocumented immigrants make up to 53% of the agriculture workforce. Removing them would increase the price of produce or other products. For example, the cost of milk would increase by 61%. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. Undocumented immigrants commit crimes at a lower rate than the citizen population of the United States. And, in the, United, and the United States is unique in this experience. The idea that, that immigrants are committing crime at a lower rate than the native population is preposterous. Actually, only 5% of inmates in federal and state prisons are not U.S. citizens leaving the remaining 95% to be legal residents or citizens. The percentage rate of incarceration for men born outside the U.S. is that of 1.6, which is less than that 3.3%. And when I think legal is something, uh, a thing, uh, an action, or something, but defining a person as illegal is kind of not, like, making a person dead. So I think it's, I don't know, really right. But the amount that illegal immigration is stigmatized, it is common to be rejected by society. That is why when going through a big transition like it is entering college, students should find themselves in a welcoming environment. Last February, UNM held a career fair. Students then realized that they allowed a fully uniformed officer from Border Patrol to come on campus. UNM later apologized for any discomfort the agent's presence caused to anyone. They stated that they completely understood how students felt about the situation. In order for an undocumented student to feel safe on campus, it is crucial to avoid these types of situations in the future. We deserve the right to an education just like anyone else. Do not be mistaken, this will only encourage us because we are undocumented, unafraid, and unapologetic. So this, as you can see, is one of my biggest passions. I love it and I see it. And like what I mentioned before, that students are still being told that they cannot attend college because of their legal status. 
Um, there are only four states or three states that actually ban undocumented students from attending college, but other states are pretty lenient towards that. Um, but most of them, what they do is they offer in-state tuition, either that or they allow undocumented students to go into college, but they still have to pay out-of-state tuition instead of the in-state. So next steps. Um, one of the things that I mentioned in the video was mandatory training for counselors and all staff. Um, I remember my mom, like, I'm the second one to go to college, and my sister, I'm the only one from my siblings that is undocumented. And so my sister was ready to go to college, and we thought, you know, we have this figured out, like, you know, it should be easier with me. And my mom realized it was completely different because I didn't have a social security number, especially when looking for scholarships, and it broke my heart a little bit to see that I pretty much met all requirements except for that one that said, must be a legal resident or U.S. citizen. Um, also, safe environment. Um, like I said, with the Border Patrol at UNM and them saying that they completely understand, but unless you're undocumented, you will never understand the fear of seeing a fully uniformed Border Patrol agent at your school with no advance notice. I mean, it would have been fine if like, they sent out an email like, hey, like we know we have undocumented students on campus, just be aware that there's going to be like, an agent on campus, so just don't worry about it. And for them to actually, so the people that were protesting this, they actually got kicked out of the event and because they thought it was unrespectful or whatever. So um, definitely we need to make sure that we all feel safe and we don't feel rejected. Also support the DREAM Act, which is very similar to like allowing in-state tuition. Also, um, a bunch of undocumented students have been trying to get this passed, which is the DREAM Act. Um, it's a little bit different, but what it says is that students who graduate from high school and are going to college should be given either legal residence or should be like um, have the road to citizenship. Either that, or either they graduate from high school and go to college, or they um, want to join the army or any of the forces. Um, I think also, um, I think just the first point is very important um, because I didn't have like a lot of guidance with counselors. Um, and I also didn't actually feel comfortable enough to go to my counselor and tell her, you know what, I'm undocumented, I don't qualify for like half of these scholarships, I don't know what to do, and, but luckily I had someone there for me and she was my, um, she was outside of school but she was a college counselor and she just sent me all these resources and told me like, you can actually go to college. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. <laughs> said was like that we have to look for resources a la brava and so we just kind of like thrown out there like hey like let's see what you can find but some of the resources I used was um, this counselor she's part of the Simon Scholars program and um, she was able to help me out with that and she sent me links to different scholarships that I could apply to um, also with Centro de la Raza was a huge help um, I applied to one of their scholarships and I got it because like you and I only gave me a brand so I was in need of financial assistance. Um, what else did I use? I think just pretty much Google. <laughs> I mean and one of the things that I found easier was to go on there and like type in like uh, scholarships for specific majors. I think that like really narrows it down. Um, there's also called it's called the Golden Doors scholarship and it's for specifically students who qualify for DACA. And so it pays for everything, including like tuition and fees, um, also for room and board, which is great. Um, 
and they also give you like opportunities for internships. So, yeah. Um. I mean, like, I think it just depends. I mean, like, sure, you can have an education and, like, still be deported. I mean, it just depends on where you are. And unfortunately, if you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, you can be deported. And I know exactly that fear. I remember one time I was walking with my mother, and we were going to go into NVD, and we saw a Border Patrol car there. And it's just this huge fear, and like you just pretty much see all your dreams like go down the toilet because of that. And luckily, I'm still here. So, but yeah, it's just it doesn't matter if you have an education or not, you can still be deported. Any other questions? I kind of have a question. Mm -hmm. I struggle with this myself too. Um, not that I, I, mean, I, I feel your situation, right? Mm -hmm. Sincerely empathize. It has to be changed. Um, so a couple things uh, come to mind. Um, one, I'm a national park ranger, and this might, well, it's not trivial because somebody brought it up. Um, so we wear a uniform that looks a lot like the uh, Border Patrol's uniform. And it's come up in, a, it was a I think I was in USA Today or something, so I wrote a really good article about that. So, um, and I work in law enforcement. So now we're, still, and we're not generally, the park ranger is, that's not what we do. We don't, um, it, it depends on where you are. If you're in Oregon Pike along the, the border parks, then we do work closely with, with, with customs and ICE. Um, but that's not what, we're in the business of protecting the resource. So, I guess my question comes to it, is that is that accurate that when you see a park ranger that that, that trigger of fear occurs and maybe more generally, what is what can the what can the park ranger do to to help to alleviate that? I mean we've talked about changing the uniform and that's come up and there's a lot of pushback in the service. We are like, whoa, we came for the border patrol, it's them, they need to change their uniform. We've been around for hundred years. So is that accurate? Um, I haven't actually like been in that situation, but I mean it's still like I guess so. I mean there's still like a fear. I mean we just see like a green uniform. And we're like you know like get out of there. Um, but like I don't know like one time like I was at a restaurant and I was like I was freaking out because I thought there was like a border patrol agent. And I was just like oh my gosh like, but like I realized like oh it's not but. I don't know, it's just like, yeah, probably like makes some sort of like, I don't know, distinction. Our yeah. flat hat is different, and our, <laughs> bat, our bat is just very different. <laughs> we have this really pretty arrowhead, and generally, we smile. <laughs> and we're all in the national park. <laughs> yeah, because like for us, it's just like, it's just the color. Like that's all we see. Like we don't really like, we don't have time to like put attention to like these little details, like you say, like the badge and you know all this, because like we just see green and like it's it's scary. Let's go. It's green. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, what would be your purpose of getting uh, education? Like not saying education is a wasteful thing. We all know education is very powerful. What would be a reason to get an education from a country that shows you such an important part? Um, well, like, I've seen that. I've grown up and, like, um, I don't exactly, like, have hate for this country, but, you know, just, like, seeing all these things and being called illegal and, you know, just, like, being yelled at, like, go back to your country, even though, like, this was part of my country at one point. Um, it's just, like, the point of getting an education is to just kind of destigmatize, like, illegal immigration because like even though you see like oh we're criminals or whatever and you see all of a sudden you see this like student who is brilliant who wants to contribute to the country because we want to make a change and we also want to 
have an education just to open doors for others because like generations to come and like even now like I see in documents and students I'm like hey like there's these scholarships if you ever need any help like I don't know a lot but I it's definitely helpful and very supportive to have someone there like with you through that path. So it's more of the you want to get the education to take back to your people that way y'all can try to push out all the discrimination away from this country. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, howdy, I'm Paris. Um, my question for you is, um, I'm a black male. I grew up in the black male narrative of the whole policing, the whole the whole narrative. I'm scared. I see a cop, I run. Um, and the whole negative connotation of being a black male, loud music, games, saggy pants, and things of that nature. And I know a lot of times, often in black communities, we reach out to the youth. Um, we do a lot of work with the youth because we know that the youth are the ones that are going to help drive our country in the right direction. So if we push 